Sandman Book 10, The Wake. This is one of those stories, again, that's just groundbreaking. It feels like the world has changed after reading this book. First thing first, the art is beautiful. I love the art. This, the art in this is so, so much better than the other art in the last book, The Kindly Ones. I mentioned that the last book was done with really thick lines, and it's not that that style is awful, but for this story, for such an intricate, uh, detailed, very, very, very delicate story, you can't be doing that kind of stuff, because it feels like it's not a metaphor of the actual art behind the story. This one, however, really, really does have this awesome, awesome line art. You can see, like, it's very, very detailed. And I really, really love it for that. The opening chapter is very cool, and I really enjoyed this kind of overall return of everybody coming together, of this great, big, almost war that's coming up, and you can feel it. Like, it's, it has the same energy as a war. This is great, big, final conflict that's going on, and it's super interesting for that, because it really brings all that forward, and really feels like a conclusion. Now, there is a portion of the story called The Wake overall, and that's, that's like the main portion of the story, and that is fantastic. I really love the first part of it, uh, because it was so, so deep and so interesting, because everything kind of comes together in really actiony ways. The second part of it was really verbal. It was a lot of ideas being thrown out. Not all of it was easily interpreted, but there was portions of it that really made it interesting. It was like a conglomerate of ideas that kind of summarized the entirety of the story in sort of a, a very shaky way. It wasn't perfect, but it was it was pretty good. Now, this is roughly where it splits up. So it's about half the book. Uh, the first half is The Wake in two parts or three. I'm not exactly sure. And then the second part is two different stories. Now, people argue whether or not these two stories should have been included and then the next two stories. And I don't know exactly. Now, one of the things I've heard is that there's a quote within this story, and I'm not going to say it here, but it is a quote that kind of encapsulates what Sandman is about, like really, like the character himself. What is he truly? It's said by Delirium, and it's really, really good. I thought it was a very interesting way of putting this entire series. That quote explains this away. It really is just an idea. Uh, you know what I mean if you know the quote. The idea, and the idea of this story really encapsulates the idea of Sandman overall, and I really like that, but at the same time, it was not that good. It wasn't that great. It wasn't that fun. For a while, I totally forgot who the main character was. I didn't know he was a returning character. I thought he was a new character. Obviously, Gaiman does that a lot, but it is a recurring character, and I found that it was, uh, the first part was kind of political, I guess, but it, it made sense with the character, and then it moved on and moved on. It had a really awesome conversation, but we waited a long time for that, and the first half of it was not that interesting, uh, but then when we finally get that conversation, you know, it doesn't really have that much idea. It's not that brilliant that you see in so many other Neil Gaiman books. It really does have a very simple good idea and that's kind of how it ends. And then you get this Japanese calligraphy thing. It's really cool. I thought that the art style was beautiful. I really enjoyed that. I thought that was a lot of fun. I prefer the normal one, obviously, because it's easier to visualize, but this one is good. It's fun. It's a really interesting way of changing things up and we really had a cool story within it but I don't know exactly what the story was meant to be. So maybe I'll like listen to the Sandman podcast. I love that podcast, by the way. It really, really goes into deep of like, what does this probably mean? And I, I really enjoy hearing somebody else's take because I, I don't know everything and I can't put everything together. And having another point of view that's so completely different than mine really helps put everything together. And it's a lot of fun. So maybe listen to that if you care. Oh, and then there's one more story actually. And it's a Shakespeare story again. And I really, really love the Shakespeare stories because in a way they're genius, but in another way they're very, long and tedious and very slow, similar to, I guess, similar to an actual William Shakespeare play. And that's not a negative thing. It's one of those things where you sit and think and you read and think and you connect it to so, so much else within just the Western canon. And then maybe you'll come to an idea, but I can't do that. I am not very, I'm not, I'm not that old. I can't really do that. Uh, but I did find it to be interesting. I found it to be just kind of moving in, in, in a certain way, but not as much as I know he wanted it to be. I can feel that there's so much more to the story that I'm just not smart enough to understand. And that that's just kind of sad because it, this would have been really, really cool. The ending explained itself a little bit. And I really enjoyed the ending because it was kind of a return to one of the original forms, uh, a form that wasn't that great. You know, back in the day, I think the peak of Sandman was kind of seven or eight. That was the peak. And going back to the beginning wasn't its peak, but it was one of the good old days and you can feel the same vibes coming through. And you can see Neil Gaiman write Sandman in a very particular way. That part of it is really cool and it really makes this whole story for me, but otherwise it does feel a little bit tedious, but that is kind of how William Shakespeare comics really go. It, nothing's really changed and it is pretty good. Overall, this story really felt like an epilogue more than anything else. And it was tough for me to do that because I really, really liked the story. I really liked the story. I thought it was awesome. And when we finally get to the epilogue, it's like, okay, can you can you bring back some of that great fervor and really pay it respect? And it really didn't do that. It felt like the old fervor was dead. And that really dulled the whole story for me, even though it felt like, you know, I could see that there was some genius peeking through. I couldn't quite see it. It wasn't quite the same genius that I had been so accustomed to seeing. It's not bad, but it doesn't feel like the same Sandman that came before. It's not that great, 
but I understand it. I get it. I get what he was trying to do, and he, he nails what he's trying to do, but what he was trying to do wasn't so good. I think that's kind of what I'm talking about, and it's not very clear either. I, I think that's what I'm trying to get at. So that's the entirety of The Sandman, reviewed by me, Nervit. Thank you guys so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this series, if you enjoyed this book, and if you enjoyed my review, please consider leaving a like down below. Also consider leaving a comment. What did you think of the story, and tell me about what you thought of the last book. A lot of people don't like it. A lot of people do. It's not very decisive as much as it is confusing. We don't know what to think because it's such a huge change, but I'd love to hear what you guys thought of it. If you enjoyed this series review or if you enjoyed each of my individual reviews, I would really appreciate a subscription down below. Uh, it's free and uh, you can do it right now. You can click the red button and you'll get subscribed and you'll see all my new videos. I'll be reviewing a bunch of more series and not, not many more comic books, so if you're into that, you might not want to subscribe. But overall, I do review a lot of books. You can check out my channel to see what kind of stuff I do. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching and my Goodreads is in the description down below. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.